like like a really really big sheet of paper or as we used to say in the old country we have we wee bit bigger and then freaking huge hey class welcome back mr g here today we're going to be talking about color theory for this next project now for me color theory it's kind of difficult to come up with new projects because it's always like we got to talk about the color wheel color relationships complementary split complementary i got a whole another video dedicated to just that kind of stuff today we're going into a project where i want to bring in the monogram or the single letter into a project so starting for me i'm using the g now when i was teaching middle school i think that drawing your initial as even in high school still drawing your initial is still a very personable item that kids like to work on in class and that's one of the reasons why i started doing this project so for this project you guys are going to be creating two simple designs of the letter and then we're going to blow that up on a larger sheet of paper like like a really really big sheet of paper or as we used to say in the old country we have we we bit bigger and then freaking huge so for this project you're taking that individual letter and you're going to draw it out on a couple of sheets of paper now for me i cut down i got that white sulfite paper i cut down two sheets of paper so that my students can use that to draw two drafts of their letter design on it here's one and then a second one that i started working on now once you have the letter drawn out now we're starting to go down with the design elements for me one of the design elements i wanted to use was doing a pattern design so i cut down smaller squares of paper this one is a uh, i think it's a three by three inch square of paper so i made a two inch grid square in the middle of that and for this we have a pattern design step one draw your letter step two place a grid on top top of this that is a two by two square so because this is a this is a 12 by 12 size sheet of paper each of my grids i'm going to have six grid blocks going up six grid blocks going across it's going to give me that nice simple divided out space and inside of each of those grid blocks i'm going to be repeating my pattern design on that so if you have a light table this is really simple or if you have a really big window once you've drawn out the sides and then you start getting your grid in there you're going to go up to the light table take your design piece place it behind the design and then using the so placing your piece on there so that you can then trace it with the light behind the image. So you're just tracing your pattern design along that square. Once you've got the full pattern design knocked out, then we're gonna transfer all of that over to a much larger piece of paper. I wanted to use something big. Like, so we got out these things. Now after this, we're lightly drawing on that piece of paper with pencil putting down the letter and then putting down the grid after that now if you want to draw your grid first and then do your letter by all means i'm not saying you can't do that i'm just saying that when you do whatever you do you draw it lightly and the reason being and i i made a mistake because i thought i was drawing lightly and i wasn't make sure that you're drawing lightly so that as you afterwards you can erase it and pull off of those lines now this piece here i'll go ahead and tell you i stole modified version of this off of pinterest like i do most of my stuff why because there's a lot more better ideas out there i just know how to make things a lot pretty well so there's this monogram m design i saw that and i was like this is a great design i like this design i like the application of this and now how can we use this with the standards for me i had to pull up standards that were tied to color theory to pattern design to line to so i'm getting a lot of my basic elements and principles still under the belt which is kind of one of those things that i hit on a lot you know if you're if you're taking an intro class you're teaching an intro class you need to do that stuff repeatedly because we're trying to nail down our foundational elements of art it's just one of those things that you have to keep going over and over and over because you keep having new students who haven't learned this stuff and that's why i make the videos so i don't have to keep repeating myself so using these foundational elements to create your design pattern you're using a lot of foundational processes also so drawing really lightly and then erasing it with a either a kneaded eraser or the gum erasers whatever eraser you guys have just make sure that you're doing it carefully you don't want to burn a hole in your paper kneaded erasers are really good about this because you can scrub a little bit re-roll the eraser around on itself and keep on going whereas with the kneaded eraser for some reason it I don't want to say that these things get hot and then they start to burn up, but basically that's what they do. Or you're going to town and you're just erasing, 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 and all of a sudden there's a hole there. Make sure that you're not going in the same direction all the time because you're pushing the paper 
uh, fibers across each other. So you want to try and get, you know, go one direction and go a different direction so that you're not continually pulling those fibers apart. So that's the thing is like they're properly meshed together. And the more that you're rubbing in that just one, the more that you're racing in that one direction, you're going to start to cut those, cut into those fibers. And that becomes a, a problem. Once you have this thing drawn out, you have lines on there and then you're going to go ahead and start putting your pattern in there. Now, again, I put a light table down. I have a light table. We put the, the design, the tracer, underneath the image and we just keep on tracing over the light table as you're doing it make sure that you take time to properly square up the image in each space and make sure that you're doing everything that you possibly can in the space provided now for me i want to have a like an infinity edge there was no start or stop of the line it just kind of pattern just abruptly ends so i didn't want to draw an outline around my letter i want to keep it free flowing so do take that into account as you're tracing that design in there that you get all of the design that's in that space because otherwise you're gonna have these these edges these blank spaces where the pattern all of a sudden just stops but you still have a little bit of space that you're gonna have to paint to finish off the whole piece and I realize that even now after I finish the project there's a few places I missed okay so you've traced out your pattern design now we gotta go ahead and start inking it now for me I the inking process is optional you don't have to ink it if you don't want to and you want to just do a straight color palette for my class for my project that's what, exactly how i want you guys to do it for my design because i was going to have more of a stained glass look to it doing a um sharpie over sharpie doing a sharpie overlay on top of the design works because it gives it that uh like black leaded element that you would see in stained glass and that's kind of fine that's fine for the design and that works for me if you're going to freely paint this make sure that you see enough of the line there as you paint to make sure that you're painting in the right spaces um and this is just one trick that i've told my students over and over again while you guys are working take the painting or take a piece that you're working on set it away from you about 10 feet and step fully back from it do that constantly like so like paint a section and then make sure there's no puddling uh and then go set it up on a wall like we i have um chip clips with magnets on the back of them that we can stick up on the whiteboard and it's easy to see the painting real easily so it's easy for those students to see what work they've done and and do it from a nice uh space apart from the design and the reason why that's important is because you miss things when you're right up next to it painting that piece so like if you're if you're like right up if you're if you're right up on that on that piece and you're just drawing and you're painting and stuff you you miss you miss all that stuff going on so make sure that you're stepping back so that you see that case in point so when i'm working on that one little space it's like right next to my face and then i step back so I can see the whole piece in its entirety and I can see what piece looks wrong and how I need to go back over there and recolor certain spots. That's an important thing that you gotta know. But getting into the painting aspect of it now. So for me, when you're using watercolor paints, number one, start light, finish dark. This does change over time. You're gonna paint some things that you need to get the dark elements in there just to work as like a guiding element. So you, you put that in there, but for the most part, we're starting light and we're finishing dark. And the reason I keep reiterating this is because I'm going back Back to finish another section on this piece that for me I just keep looking I'm like I want to do something else I have a set of uh, iridescent inks I got a set of these Doc Martens uh, iridescent inks it's not Doc Martin like the shoes these are uh, this Doc PH Martens it's an ink thing so I saw this guy on Instagram this one's the this is a drawing ink but you can see how pretty that yellow is. It's a nice golden color. I have another version, it's more of the iridescence and those are more metallic in their look and that's what I'm gonna finish off with. But I was trolling through Instagram and came across a character taking a painting and design that they've done and then they'll go back with a really fine tip Japanese style brush with uh, kind of a long hair trail so that you can get these nice pull marks of the ink. And what they're doing is they're using the ink to raise specific elements in the design. I think that's a great concept. Why? Because you're taking all of these and then using the gold iridescent inks afterwards to kind of heighten it and bring it out and highlight it i think it's just awesome i think it'll just it'll change the depth of the painting just up a whole nother level i'm looking forward to doing that and, and i'll try and throw something in at the end how it came out so now for me this is a bridge project because i have a, a first term and a second term and this i use between the end of the first term and the beginning of the second term because those who students are, that are going into my b section they need that crossover bridge and the pieces that we're getting into next are a lot more focused on typography 
and 3D design. So how we shape and structure doing a large letter design where you have to encompass all of these shapes of the letter and how those things move. That's an important thing to know as you go into the next phase where you're having to build these things three dimensionally and you're having to think of uh, the level of depth and the, how a design can change. How does it look in nature? How's, how do we see that in the real world? So how do we manipulate those in space? And that's what we're build, building into next. So those are some videos that I'm working on for some future classes so that you guys can be up to date with all the stuff that I teach and learn before it gets away from me too much here. I'll go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget, I uh, hope you guys got something fun out of today's class. As always, learn something new, spread the message out to the masses. So don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and all the various platforms. Again, get those messages out there to all as many teachers and friends as we possibly can. Uh, don't forget if you got a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands in the comments below. I have any answers to questions from my classmates. Until then, I'm going to go work on, I'm going to go finish this up and put this in here. So hopefully it's like an end credit thing. Um, but other than that, guys, as always, I'll see you guys in the next class. So until then, later, guys.